Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this weekly market analysis webinar for LCG. My name is Jasper Lawler. Um, so in this webinar we're going to cover the major currency pairs, major commodities and major indices uh, and what the charts might tell us with a little sprinkling, sprinkling of uh, fundamentals uh, what, but mainly what the charts will tell us for this forthcoming week. Uh, please read the, the, the disclaimer as seen on the screen um, but without much further ado I'm going to move over to the trading platform. So indeed this is the, uh, the LCG Trader Pro. Um, it's, um, you know, we're starting off with the, the Forex market and so this is the, the Euro dollar currency pair. So um, chart little change from, from last week. Last week we were on the cusp of a pullback, uh, a, we were on the cusp of an upside breakout with a little pullback and we were looking for some sort of continuation um, up into the 114s. Didn't get it, we were back below this key breakout level uh, and still stuck in this essentially 111 to 112 range. Now one thing I do want to point out to you here, um, this can be a good um, indicator based uh, entry signal um, and so it's some um, <clears throat> it's called a, a positive reversal and it and relates to the RSI indicator so it's where price makes a, a low and then a higher low but in the meantime momentum makes a low and then a lower low so the idea is that price is king and price is actually uh, showing strength in the face of falling momentum so it's actually a buy signal. Now that's not to say this is going to pan out because across quite a few markets the dollar's looking strong and certainly that uh, euro weakness from last week could continue. Um, but we, we're basically, this signal would suggest that this little low that we made at 111 is, is a base for now and that we can push to the top side. Um, now if, if this trade is going to be worthwhile um, then uh, then you're looking at uh, this as the kind of risk area down to, down to this uh, down to this low down here. So you're really going to want to see the currency push up back towards that high made last week or the week before rather around 112.50 uh, or even up to 113, 114 for a sustained rally and, and basically suggesting that this thesis that I had last week we're actually basing out in the euro is coming to fruition and, and, and this is the final swing low so positive reversal could work um, it's supported by the fact that we've been making higher highs in momentum with price um, the only downside is that if we look over to this weekly chart zoom in a little bit we can see that on a on a weekly level uh, this has just been rejected and we, we've hit the 50 day moving uh, 50 week moving average um, this is an evening style reversal pattern these one two three here um, and it's at this old area of resistance so on a weekly level um, this doesn't look great uh, you know it sort of looks like the market's rolling over as I say if you um, take that daily time frame signal it, it looks more positive Let's switch gear to dollar yen. Uh, this is huge actually, and uh, to me this looks very bullish because last week we were talking about the, the, the price, don't know, sorry, I don't know why I've moved that. Um, we were talking about the price uh, moving back down into a new bearish trend, um, but that, that absolutely hasn't materialized. Um, and you can see that if I uh, <coughs> zoom out the price a little bit here, we're in a downtrend uptrending since uh, since middle of last year since August but we were struggling to get through that 109.50 and then we had that big break through this trend line looks bearish but look at this look at the state of this reversal from 108 anyone trying to sell it below 108 obviously uh, shorts covered in uh, very quickly as we t went from below 108 to above 109 um, in the space of a day that if you remember was people were initially buying the yen uh, on the Middle Eastern uh, geopolitical fears, uh, but then uh, quickly selling the yen 
when it became clear that uh, the US and Iran weren't escalating things into a fully fledged war. So now uh, the dollar's up just shy of this 110 level and it's indeed breaking out. Um, and if, again, uh, judging by this decline and then the, 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 the rebound, we're about the 61.8 Fib level and it looks like we're pushing through it. Uh, and looks like this uptrend is going to get more legs. It looks like we're breaking to the top side. Normally, dollar yen is meant to move higher in sync. It's not meant to, but it, it often does correlate with higher equity prices. Equities have been doing very well recently, and dollar yen looks like it's finally about to sort of um, make some moves to, to catch up the gains we've seen in equities. And indeed, by doing so, actually supports the, the idea of having more gains inequities as well so 110 all to watch certainly chance for another failure at 110 um, uh, but the extent of this reversal to me would suggest that we're, we're starting to look bullish now switch gears to the British pound so let's just zoom out for a second we can see it again talked about it last week but just just above 133 a big area of resistance we saw that massive reversal after the election and things kind of stumbling around a bit after that <clears throat> uh, sold after the election got a decent bounce but sold back into this rising trend line again and it's um, just with our first little negative print if today finishes as it does on MACD um, really first time since the election was announced we've had a bit of negativity uh, that could eventually be a buy opportunity let's see how this rising trend line holds if we can hold this trend line today maybe even avoid the negative uh, MACD um, then actually one, uh, 130 the big round number uh, ends up being potentially a buy opportunity here so we're at 130 support um, if we end up taking out this uh, rising trend line and the 130, to me that's pretty bearish. If we hold it, it's positive, uh, and this uptrend that we uh, that we ended last year with uh, has actually has a chance of resuming. At the moment, it looks pretty ominous. It was just such a hefty sell-off from 133. It looks like traders look for a bit of a pullback first, particularly in the light of. Uh, Looks like the Bank of England wants to try and cut interest rates, uh, and that's obviously a bit of a surprise. Um, optimism was supposed to be on the up, uh, economy in better shape with, with Brexit uncertainty removed. It's clearly not the viewpoint of central bankers who are now looking to cut interest rates even further into record low territory again. Uh, <clears throat> good if you're looking to take out a mortgage, um, you know, pretty bad otherwise. Let's switch gears to commodities. So uh, this is gold. Again, a massive reversal, a bit like dollar yen, huge reversal to the top side. People covering their uh, their yen longs here, the same thing. They're, they're um, dropping off their, their longs in gold. That was a huge reversal. Again, in one day, pretty much $50 down. Um, one, uh, you know, if you're talking about a... Um, a big handle being say 1500 to 1600 we lost half a big handle um, from 1600 to 50, uh, 1550 thereabouts in the space of a day um, so that that's um, you know just when you get those big one day reversals like that it takes a bit of recovering from and again you can see on this weekly chart um, look at that big bearish pin bar reversal right at the six not right at but at the sixteen hundred dollars per ounce level so you know, it's not uh, it's not game over for gold, but um, you know, it looks potentially here like we're dealing with is a sort of situation where um, it's it's got overbought, it's come out of overbought, it's trying to rally into a new trend to be overbought again, but it's actually rolling over. So uh, it looks a bit ominous for gold. The trend is higher, um, but it's just a big big bearish signal, and I think probably in the short term. Hard to know if we can get a bounce again off 1550. Um, I sort of doubt it. Uh, and then we head down to 1520, which is the area I mentioned before. So talking about this is the first zone, which obviously you know has has been working to stall the price decline, um, but not really quite getting the uplift yet. We still could. Um, and then this is the next zone down here. So uh, with 1520 for me being these two previous peaks being probably the, the main one to look out for. 
So if, if we're looking for price to pull back a bit further, maybe 1520 is the one that's uh, possible to buy into if, you, if you're hoping this uptrend can continue. Uh, Brent crude, another massive reversal. We've had some good volatility. Um, it's just not been in favour of the trend. It's just been huge reversals off levels. So if you've been selling into the levels, buying into the levels, um, you've been doing very well. If you've been looking for breakouts, uh, you've been doing terribly. Uh, it's the nature of the market. Sometimes it works one way, sometimes it works the other. Um, what I'm thinking here, based on this rising trend line in RSI breaking, it looks like the upward momentum has, um, you know, both by the size of that huge reversal of $70 in Brent and the fact that we've now taken out 65 um, to, uh, and this broken rising RSI trend line, and putting it all together um, suggests to me we're still just basically in a range. If we go out to the weekly chart, looks like we're just, you know, 75 has been a top, 50 has been the low, and it's just a big old choppy range, and, and just oil's just not trending basically. Um, and does you can't always sell it right at the old high, but did perfectly work this last time with 70 being the old high, and then just sold right down from 70 again. Obviously, in the previous occasion, we had a high at 75, but then it sold off at 70. So, but in general, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of selling the big areas of, uh, of strength and buying up the, the, the big areas of weakness. Seems to be the tactic for oil for the time being. Switch gears to indices. Oh, what's going on here with the FTSE? Let's. So, th this is the daily chart, but it's zoomed out a bit. You can see that decent support 7,000, decent resistance above 7,700. We're just beneath that resistance at the moment. Not a lot has changed from last week, except we had a, a dip below 7,500, uh, 7, 7, bounced back above it. That to me was quite a bullish sign, we've, and we've held on to that, that old resistance. So to me, there's still a good chance that we've basically had the, uh, the flagpole, the bull flag, and we're looking to break to the top side. Um, you know, and again, supported by maybe a sort of all the haven assets, gold and yen, selling off massively. Uh, stock markets hitting record highs in the US. Um, if that trend continues, uh, you would look for the UK to participate, particularly if the pound is selling off a bit. Um, so potentially look at an upside breakout in the FTSE 100 in the coming days. Um, let's see how that pans out. Germany 30, all the indices have gone a bit odd, but let's scroll back to the current time frame. Similar situation here, we're looking basically where the DAX is just off its record highs. This is a weekly chart, by the way. So, uh, you know, trend on a kind of daily basis, if we if we drop down to that chart, very much an uptrend, obviously, uh, but just a little bit of caution in that we're just running into those record highs. So we're basically waiting for that, waiting for that big, long-term signal of a break above 13,500 to tell us yes we are in a big bull market for German stocks and um, uh, the fact that we've reversed off the 13,000 level what one two three ish times on a weekly basis um, looks like the market doesn't want to go much lower and we you know we could be in for for more uh, a bigger push to the top sides and record highs uh, I know it's tempting to sell these indices at uh, at the old highs, and that certainly could work. But I'm just going on the shorter term price and action at the moment doesn't support doing that. Um, when we get some confirmation on the short term that those big long term levels are holding, and actually we're in for a big correction in markets, and I will certainly say so. But I, for me, there's no way of saying it when we're at the high. It would just be a guess, and you can do that. Um, but there's just for me, I wait for a little bit more confirmation, and, and it's just a factor of which time frame you like to trade. I suppose if, if you're looking at a trade um, over the next couple of months, and uh, you're willing to tolerate some more upside um, and a bigger stop loss, potentially in the next couple of months, in the first quarter, we do get a steeper sell-off. So. If that's the way you do things, certainly that makes sense. But for me, obviously, I'm top. 
generally trading on a more uh, regular basis as I think most of the people watching this webinar are, most of you guys are. So from that shorter term trading perspective, still we're looking at a push to the top side and the patterns all look quite bullish. So last but not least, we've had a reversal from 29,000 in the Dow, so it's a big round number. Um, but if you remember, we reversed sharply off 28,000, trend very much bullish, um, we broke out of that pattern at the, um, the end of last year. We confirmed the old resistance, rallied up into 29,000 and having a small pullback for the second time around that 29,000 level. Um, certainly we could dip down to this uh, 28,000 level again, certainly possible. Um, but at the moment, you know, I think we're we're still assuming that this uh, this rally just continues. It, it's silly to sell this market at the moment based on the current price action. You just get killed every time you try. Just look at this, look at this daily candlestick right here as proof as to what happens when you try and sell. Um, nonetheless, uh, as I mentioned last week, there is some bearish divergence. So if you're looking for excuses, there is some to be found in the momentum indicators, um, in the oscillators that the um, the momentum's turning down while the price is still heading higher. So, well, you know, watch out for that, certainly. Um, I would look for the big price action signal to confirm what the momentum indicators were saying ahead of time. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for today. Thank you very much for, for watching. Of course, uh, make sure to follow LCG on the various social media channels and, of course, YouTube and myself on Twitter as well. Cheers, everyone. Jasper signing out.